So the course of time is really very much like the course of a ship in the ocean. Because here's the ship, you see, and it leaves behind it a wake. And the wake fades out. And that tells us where the ship has been in just the same way as the past and our memory of the past tells us what we have done. But as we go back into the past and we go back and back to prehistory and we use all kinds of instruments and scientific methods for detecting what happened, we eventually reach a point where all record of the past fades away in just the same way as the wake of the ship. Now the important thing to remember in this illustration is that the wake doesn't drive the ship any more than the tail wags the dog. Colors in the vastness of the sky as we fly through on wings of time looking down upon ethereal dreams and in our vision is the grandeur of eternity. We are eternally divine. So here we are, the first episode of Pearls of Wisdom. I am Jason Paul Januzzi. That little bit of recording you heard to kick things off was from the great Alan Watts. I will be pretty consistently going back to thoughts, ideas, recordings of Alan Watts. I'm an avid follower of his, and um, maybe I'll talk about him even later. Um, this show is perceptions of one human being which is me. And looking at the ship, the example of the ship moving through the water, representing the present moment of time and leaving behind the past in a wake and the concept that that wake does not push that boat forward. It's just left behind. And so we'll delve a little bit into time today and the universe and whatever other subjects come to mind because I'm sort of um, just letting this all flow from the different thoughts I have. So first off, the grand question. Why not just go right for it? Why not just go right into the grand question of who I am? Because it'll, it'll allow me to give you a little freedom as far as how you uh, listen to this um, and how you approach me. The grand question is who am I? Okay. And who am I from my point of view is Jason Paul Januzzi. That's my who. Um, but I've spent pretty much my whole lifetime time trying to figure out anything I could figure out. Now, if we look at that, is Jason Paul Januzzi, is that now the person who's sitting here talking to you? This current form of this creature, of this earthly organism, is that this person right here? Or does Jason Paul Januzzi represent all the many Jason Paul Januzzi's that have been through the years? Because I've changed a lot in my life. We all do to a certain extent. Some of us are what they call more solid. They don't seem to change from their character very much. And then there's others of us, which I would put myself in that category, who are sort of radically changing within every decade. So I look back at my younger self and when I was a kid and my, my view on the world and, and, and I was sort of 
It was always very observational, so I was sort of always taking things in when I was very young. Then in my teenage years, I started to form a lot of thoughts from, you know, of course, from the effects of people around me and, and my own. I was always a bit of an individual thinker also. And I had pretty, pretty straightforward, intense ideas on how things should be. And that sort of even set in a little bit farther as time went in. And I used to argue very intensely about things and have a strong belief system. So where I'm going with this is that you are welcome to argue, debate with anything I say. You could comment with great veracity and get excited and I hope you're getting excited in, in, in either direction. Um, I don't argue very much these days. I don't see the value in it. Um, but if I were to argue, I want to give you the freedom to argue with things I say because I certainly would argue with myself. Not only would I argue with all the different versions of myself through the years who had very different ideas of things along the way. And as I change with those ideas, some of them are flip-flopped completely the opposite of the way I used to think. So in essence, I'm arguing with myself, right? I'm debating with myself. And we could use the word debating if you want to make it a little more pretty. Um, so it's not a... Well, I'm the good or bad doesn't even matter. It's just a thing that you're welcome to do. And I wouldn't mind it. I probably wouldn't even pay attention to it, to be honest with you. But that, uh, but that does give us the ability to see into who we are by seeing all the different uh, you know, people that we were. Which one represents us? Is it this person that you are now? which you probably would like to be your representative because you feel you've brought them to a certain place. But isn't there a responsibility to also say that all those other people are also you, are also a part of you. Everything you've done, everything you've been, a, you know, you've been a part of your experiences, your, your thought process. And moving into the future, which is very likely next week when I listen to this, I'll go, what was that guy talking about? Just to give you a little idea of where this whole thing's at. Um, for me, it's a fun exercise. It's an interesting thing to do to decide to talk on a microphone to a bunch of people you don't see. Probably the, the guide to all that is Alan Watts. He's guiding the show, and he felt it was important to record his lectures back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, um, and there's a lot of them on the internet. So if you don't know who Alan Watts is, go on the internet, look him up. I think you'll at least be slightly interested. If you're not interested at all when you listen to his, one of his lectures, you probably aren't going to like a lot of what I'm talking about, um, because this whole thing is going to be guided by some of, some of that integrated with other experiences throughout my whole life things that i have been into and more recently different things i listened to um when i was very very young i picked up a uh, a book uh, khalil gibran's the prophet it had a big effect on me i was i'm guessing i was around eight years old okay and i probably wasn't quite ready for it um or maybe what I'm doing now has actually been the driving force for why I picked up that book. And I'm going to get into that concept in a minute. But um, I picked up the book and I read it and I tried to understand some of what it's meant. And I've sort of carried it with me through my whole life. Not just one copy. I've had a couple dozen copies of that book. I've given a lot of them away over the years because I, I always like to see how other people get into it. Um, it's meant something to me. So I, of course, human beings, we always think that if it meant something to us, it might mean something to someone else, which is fine. 
Um, so I read that and it had an effect on me. Through the years, that effect and the, 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 how I approached looking at that book has changed up to this day. Um, I'll bring in, you know, I might even read a little bit from that because he does, Khalil Brand has a poem on time. So maybe I'll read that later in the episode. So let's get back to time. Time is this expansive deal, okay? I'm not going to be overly scientific here, so if, if, if uh, I'm the, 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 the mechanism in my brain is kind of turning and, and things are coming out of my mouth, we all know this. This is how human beings work, right? So time, we've, we've looked at it in this linear fashion as a society. Maybe not everywhere, you know, I, I think there's different cultures and different religions around the world that, that see it maybe differently. Hinduism and Buddhism obviously see it maybe a little bit differently and uh, we tend to relate things very directly to our own culture um, without that much knowledge on other cultures. Though we feel we do have it, we, we really don't have an essence of a lot of other cultures. So we relate everything to ours. So I'll, I'll stay within that framework of, work of being an American and growing up here and learning my lessons here in America. But we've looked at this time as, as like a timeline. It's linear. This happens, which causes this to happen, which causes this to happen. I would propose it in a different way. First, I would look at it more like a bubble. I would look at we're in this bubble of now. And we all talk about being present in the moment, being able to be present in the moment. And so we're inside this bubble. Now we can reach out and, and look at it and we can reach out like we touch the edges of the bubble. So it's all right there in front of us. So we can be very present to what's in front of us, right? And be in this bubble of now, which gives us not that much responsibility towards the past or the future, which is fine. Or we could look at that bubble as being a bit more expansive, right? Let, let that bubble grow out and grow out and maybe reach all the way back to your birth and reach all the way forward to your death. And so then the expansiveness of this now moment and being present in this now moment is really being present in your entire life. And it's all there circling, circling around you in this bubble. And it's not so much this happened, that happened, this is going to happen. And it brings me back to that idea I had before. Maybe this moment of me speaking about Khalil Gibran and the effects of that book, maybe that is the causality for me picking it up in the first place. And that's a very different way to think. And I'm going to propose concepts and perceptions that are different, that maybe won't cause any harm for us to try to think a little bit differently than we have all these years. So to think that something that's happening right now is as or more responsible for something that happened 20 years ago than vice versa. And if you sit and you really think and think, well, why did I, you know, you're a kid playing with a fire truck and then 20 years later you become a fireman. Is it the kid playing with the fire truck that creates the fireman or is it the fireman that creates the kid playing with the fire truck? If time can be expansive around us, if it can be all encompassing, then there are these kind of possibilities and, and uh, they're not things we have, you know, delved into very much. So, thinking about life, your life, which is life to death, we, we have to think in terms now of, um, and I won't go too deep into this process, but the ego and the who am I which are different things. The, the ego is this part of this physical body in our life we have. And the who am I 
is this other part where you're it's the it's the part of the universe that you are so i'll make this that where i'm going with this a little more clear in a minute but um your life and your death if we look at it as a masterpiece painting you've got the canvas out and you're making you're creating your masterpiece and you've got the paintbrush and you're dipping in in colors and when you're younger you're you're some people are making these wonderful strokes and everything looks perfect and they keep just making these kind of similar strokes throughout their life which is fine and then there's people who they 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 don't know what they're doing right they make these strokes and everyone around them goes why did you do that let me help you let me tell you how you should be doing your strokes how you should be making this painting but they don't realize that you need to be making that painting yourself because those strokes that might look like something wrong later on could be what really makes that painting beautiful you know you see it all the time someone who's like done something that seems horrible and then later on they overcome those struggles they overcome those difficulties and then everyone stands up and applauds them i mean they make movies about people like this right they don't really make too many movies about the person who's just making the right stroke all the time so you know as you're going through your life and you're doing things and and you're hung up on the fact that you're not doing things right or you feel bad or people around you are making you feel like things aren't right just remember you still got that paintbrush you still got the ability to change that painting and make strokes that will make those older strokes flow a different way and so that brings me back to the concept is those are those strokes that you make with the paintbrush in the future responsible for making the ones you made before something different aren't those future strokes as important to how the outlook of those other strokes are as is vice versa and these are the elements of time looking at it in a with a different conceptualization that's all um and um you know looking at my very witty episode title time in a klein bottle well what's a klein bottle if you don't know what a klein bottle is go on the internet and look up klein bottle it's a very very interesting item it's it's got its roots in science i suppose um and a scientist or astrophysicist will probably give you a precise definition of a klein bottle i will not do that i will say that it can be looked at as if it has no inside or it could be looked at as has no outside um or the way i look at it is it has neither it has no inside or outside right it's it's both and neither and so i kind of stuck that in there because i knew i would talk a little bit about our magical universe because that's what this show is going to be about and um when we say the universe is infinite and yet ever growing how do we wrap our minds around that well this could either help that in your mind or it could add to it and that's that the universe has no inside or outside the same way as a klein bottle and time has no inside or outside okay even though i gave this concept of a bubble which you can see i already language language is going to get in my way constantly so i gave you the idea of a bubble which you know when you think of a bubble you definitively think of an inside and an outside <laughs> but the universe has no inside or outside it's it that's why it's infinite and that's why it can grow within that being infinite and time is the same <clears throat> so of course 
we are part of this universe and we are a replication of this universe. So our life and that masterpiece and who we are is a creation that has no inside or outside. <clears throat> and let me just explain that further. So, so pretty consistently we think of ourselves as being inside, as being a creature of inside, right? We've got our heart in there, we've got our circulatory system, we've got this brain, and we really see ourselves from this brain. We look out our eyes into the world. We look out of our eyes into the world, right? And we are in this body when we're born, we have this body, it grows, and then when we die, we, uh, we, we come out of this body, we die, and it's gone. And there are so many different opinions on what all that means. But if we look at it as we have no inside or outside, then what we feel is going on inside of us is one thing, but then we are also part of everything going on outside of us. We're part of the universe. So even though we live and we die, that is the one part of us and there is another thing that we are within ourselves. Well, see, there's language again getting in my way. Within and without of ourselves. We're this other thing that is actually part of the whole. Everyone is part of the whole. Everything is part of the whole. There's no inside. There's no outside. There's this continuum that's going on. So... This will give you a little bit of an idea of where I'm going with this whole podcast. I don't really know exactly what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to have, you know, concepts of where to go with something. And then I'll sort of just go with it as I'm flowing. And hopefully it provokes some thought. Hopefully you can listen to it and think a little differently or just expand your thinking. I, you know, most things that you come across, you know... If you really break them down and you sit down, you sit down and listen to something and it strikes you as being important to you. But sometimes that's as far as you think about it. You let it come into you and you don't ever actually analyze it beyond that. But a lot of things that, that you really like, if you analyze them and you pull them apart, you know most of what's being said. You already know what's being said. It's just now being said in a, in a different way that provokes your thought and makes it soak into your soul a little bit more so when you get great works and you read them and they're all the words that you know if there's not a word you, you know i hope you'll look it up in the dictionary and figure out what it is and then you know all the words so you know most of what it is but somehow it strikes you, the chords within you those strings those notes within you the music that's within you it strikes it in a way that makes you see things differently and so I guess that's all I'm trying to accomplish here. Um, even for myself, because even as I speak here and I, and I put these things forth, um, you may be surprised that it's provoking my thought. It's making me think in different ways. And probably what I'm saying here and the way I feel about things, maybe when I listen to it three weeks from now, it's gonna change how I feel or see things. That's why I always thought it might be interesting to redo an episode like this, like a year later, and see where your, where your thoughts go in that case. Um, but anyway, for, for, for now, what I'll do is uh, I'll read you this Khalil Gibran poem, okay? And, uh, and we'll get a little bit more insight from a great writer. And an astronomer said, Master, what of time? And he answered, You would measure time, the measureless, and the immeasurable. You would adjust your conduct and even direct the course of your spirit according to hours and seasons. Of time you would make a stream upon whose bank you would sit and watch its flowing. 
Yet the timeless in you is aware of life's timelessness and knows that yesterday is but today's memory and tomorrow is today's dream. And that that which sings and contemplates in you is still dwelling within the bounds of that first moment which scattered the stars into space. Who among you does not feel that his power to love is boundless? And yet who does not feel that very love, though boundless, encompassed within the center of his being? And moving not from love thought to love thought, nor from love deeds to other love deeds, and is not time even as love is undivided and spaceless? But if in your thoughts you must measure time into seasons, let each season encircle all the other seasons, and let today embrace the past with remembrance and the future with longing. That's a good one, isn't it? I love his writing. That's, that's really influenced me. I, I, I like to write poetry. I, I, I threw a little one at you that I just kind of came up with off the cuff in the beginning of the show. But I do love to write poetry. And it's guys like that that really have influenced how I write. So anyway, to sort of kick this thing off or... Well, not kick it off. I've already kicked it off. Now I'm ending it. But um, I decided when I, when I was going to do this that I did not want to um, do a video podcast. Initially, I thought, yeah, I'm going to do a video podcast. But then uh, the idea of me looking at myself the whole time was a little difficult. I, I couldn't get into seeing my face on the screen talking to people. So I thought better just to do the audio but since it's the audio, I, I figure I should at least give you a sense of uh, my scene, what's going on here. So I have these two very low-lit lamps on. Uh, I'm in kind of faded light. I'm sitting on this comfortable leather couch. S sitting back, completely sitting back. I've got a microphone on a, on a stand so that it's just kind of hanging there over me and I am completely relaxed. I'm not like leaning against the table or anything like that. Completely just relaxed. I have some chimes going off in the background while I'm doing this. <sighs> it's pretty nice. So we'll finish up. I'll, I'll uh, after I get done talking, I'll play you one more Alan Watts clip on um, how a tree apples and the earth peoples or he may put it as the universe peoples. I, I've heard him say, I've heard that in his speeches a lot and I've always thought more tree, apples, earth peoples. So if the tree apples, right? And, it, and an apple is life, is the growth on the tree and that apple grows and it falls off the tree and that's the apple's death. What it then does is it, the seeds from that apple go into the ground and grow a whole other tree. So if the earth peoples and we are born and we walk through the time with this body and we die and we fall from this earth, what will our seeds grow? Thank you, everybody. Pearls of wisdom. Look, here is a tree in the garden, and every summer it produces apples. And we call it an apple tree, because the tree apples. That's what it does. All right. Now here is a solar system inside a galaxy and one of the peculiarities of this solar system is that at least on the planet Earth the thing peoples <laughs> in just the same way that an apple tree apples. <laughs> now maybe two million years ago somebody came from another galaxy in a flying saucer and had a look at this solar system 
and they looked it over and shrugged their shoulders and said just a bunch of rocks and they went away later on maybe two million years later they came around and they looked at it again and they said excuse me we thought it was a bunch of rocks but it's peopling <laughs> and it's alive after all it has done something intelligent because you see we grow out of this world in exactly the same way that the apples grow on the apple tree if evolution means anything it means that but you see we we curiously twist it we say well first of all in the beginning there was nothing but gas and rock and then intelligence happened to arise in it you know like a sort of fungus or slime on the top of the whole thing uh, but we're thinking in a way you see that disconnects the intelligence from the rocks where there are rocks watch out watch out because the rocks are going eventually to come alive Thank you.